Hi, there is one little flaw in using JavaScript to protect your pages only and then having the pages served from your CMS, which is that people can hack into your pages even if you add a paywall in between. Now I want to show you for educational purposes only how to hack into a member stack site and then also as you as the member stack user how to use WIST and a proper database how to protect yourself from that how to protect yourself from people accessing your content illegally um, without having to pay for that and you know let's first of all start for educational purposes only to hack this member stack site here so I have a member stack site and what I want to do is I want to copy this URL and I want to go to a tool called sitemap um, XML sitemaps.com. I put that in here. It takes a few minutes to load, but I'm getting all the pages. This is what I want. I want to have the direct link for the gated pages. So now the admin dashboard is protected by member stack because if I go on here, it's going to say, yes, you have to, you know, you have to sign up. Otherwise, you know, it won't work. But they don't know that I go on inspect, I go on settings in the console, I scroll all the way down and disable JavaScript, boom, reload the page again. And now, oops, reload the page again. Oh, I think I have to go on a different page and then before I go on there. So let's go here, make sure JavaScript is disabled. Let's close this, inspect, inspect and go down settings. I don't like this thing. Oh, so we got that pop up away. Disable JavaScript. Keep it disabled. Go on this page. And now I'm on the dashboard. I can see all the private content from member stack without having to be authenticated or to pay for it. And I can mess up things. I can add a new project here. And then of course I would have to disable JavaScript. So let's inspect this again. Let's go on settings. Now, probably only developers are going to know about this, but I still want to want you to know it at least. So if I go on here and I go on this page here, I will have disabled JavaScript. I will then go on here and I will be able to create a new project and to hack, kind of like hack myself and add like malicious data into their CMS. So let's just target uh, Julian and let's go next. Oops, I have to do that. I have, it's like the UI is not that ideal, but I then I could go on. I think there's maybe something cut off here. Let's actually uh, cut, maybe like move the console a little bit to the side. So that works maybe a little bit better. I mean, that time that is not ideal because I think something is cut up on the top. But uh, you get the idea. I can then make requests to their CMS and do all of that things if they don't have it properly protected. I could also now go in here and kind of like update the project name and select a different stage, kind of like add a different date in here and submit it. And it, I just updated that without having to be logged in, as you can see. I updated their CMS with malicious data without having to log in and authenticate on the page, which is, you know, I can cite it to Julian, is a little bit concerning. Let's actually add a station here, complete it. Let's just make sure we should now change this. The name will be changed and it's marked as completed. I'm not logged in, I'm not authenticated. I'm hacked in here. Now, this is something that can be a little bit distracting <laughs> uh, for your project. And if you have some bad actors that want to hurt you for some reason, that may not be a cool thing. But there is a tool called WIST. It's W-I-Z-E-D. Let's don't look at their pricing. Let's just first look at what it can do. This tool, WIST, can help you with that. Now, I mean, I certainly have ways to go into there the same way with like I can go you know I can go the same to the same back door with WIST too but WIST has the benefit that I can connect it with a database 
and I can use that database to only serve data instead of Webflow CMS if the user is authenticated, which twists the whole situation. Because normally, now the Webflow page, the CMS page lives on Webflow Aesthetic HTML. The content all requests through make can, are just going on. They just happen if the user clicks a button. With Wiz, we can make a twist to there. We can make the requests only work if the auth token is validated and then use a tool like Xano, which is a no-code backend and can replace Webflow CMS for this to then only perform this action of updating that if the auth token is validated. This is why it is important that when you build a membership app, when you build a SaaS, when you build a web app, that you don't just build it in two weeks, but that you build it on the foundation, on the principles of web development so that it is protected, that, not, that no bad actors can log into your page and mess up everything you build in the two weeks. It's not about building something fast. It's about building a SaaS that you can sleep well at night. Because imagine if this would be connected to your OpenAI API key, if this would be connected with anything that costs money, I would be able to make all of those requests and you may wake up with a $2,000 OpenAI invoice if you don't have spend cap set in. This is not ideal. This is why I'm emphasizing all the time, you need a proper backend. It's, I think member stack is a great tool to save development time. I would use their admin API. They have a cool thing. And I'm not saying that member stack is bad. I like member stack. Um, we go to member stack admin API. You can use the member stack admin API to authenticate the users um, inside of Xano. And then only if the user is authenticated, let the user perform requests and you kill make and you do this in Xano because this is the place where your authentication can happen. All in one place, you wanna guard and gate that. It's very important to understand the principles of web development because little mistakes can cost a lot of money. Member stack is a great tool. Wist is a great tool. Make is a great tool. But every tool is only as good as the understanding of the person who uses it. So if you're going to build something more legitimate, I would not even worry about this if you just have a membership site. But I see a lot of people building AI apps like a membership site. And this is where it gets a little bit more concerning because it doesn't cost you a fortune if someone watches your fitness course for free. I would not care about that. But if someone uses your API key that costs you money for free, maliciously, maybe a competitor wanting to hurt your business, that is an issue, right? And we need to understand that there are rules about how we build things in the web. If we don't follow those rules, we have to live with the consequences. And the consequences are it's going to cost maybe a little bit of money if we have some bad actors. And there are bad actors on the internet. Um, the best story is the rabbit R1 thing where like their 11 labs and their open AI keys were like kind of like um, exposed, depreciated, and you know, they had to roll over to new keys. So if you want to protect yourself from those things, install Xano as your backend. This would be my recommendation. It's the closest thing to make. It's the most no code backend that is out there yet. Um, I would look into Xano as my backend. I would look to add Wist on top of there to make the connection between member stack and, uh, and Webflow and Xano to make it low code. And then I would make sure that I rewrite all my logic that I have on make and move it over to Xano to make sure that nobody can just call the webhook URL to maliciously do that. Like they could set up a cron job just to call that webhook every minute if they just want, you know, and then return the result to kind of like use your APIs for free without you knowing that it doesn't come from your site. If you have like just a simple make scenario or a zap on there, I don't want to make you fear of this. You should not be concerned about this if you have a member stack, membership site. But if you use member stack for a SaaS, there are different rules. And member stack is great for that. But I just want you to follow the rules of web development 
so that you don't get hurt during the process. Um, because it happened for me a few times. And then you sometimes you wake up to a $5,000 Zapier invoice and you ask yourself, how did that happen? So this is not to spread any fear, but this is just to educate you that there are great tools out there, but the tool is not making the work of thinking for us. We still have to think for us ourselves, and we still have to build logic that is protecting us. So I hope that this video was educational and there is an alternative out there where I would use WIST and Xano together to make those flows. And then you may say, oh, if I use WIST, I don't have this nice paths like in Webflow CMS, for example, where I can just do slash um, project slash user slash one to three. There is actually an alternative because I've built something called CMS-ish that lets you do that, right? And you can just do, um, it's cms-ish.webflow.io where you can do like block slash post and this will be like a dynamic parameter that you can pass on to WIST. So you have those nice path-based URLs instead of like the question mark ID equals. And there's actually even a V2 coming. I'll make a video on that soon. It's already available uh, for nocodeprocode.com members. And yeah, if you want more information about how to develop things properly, if you want to learn more about the principles of web development, of how to build things so that they are secure, that they are reliable, and that you don't wake up to an expensive Zapier or make invoice, you're more than welcome to join the No Code Pro Code community. Um, I would love to see you in there. Um, and there are a lot of great educational resources. We're right now giving you like a whole framework to build PWAs. Um, and this will be turned into a low code tool that is free for all members as well. So you can send push notifications and there is like, there are very cool things. They're like no code frameworks, courses, uh, clonables, templates, like AI streaming, secure, authenticated AI streaming that you can run for free. This AI, this you can run Lambda 3.1. Members can run Lambda 3.1 as of right now for free on their Xano instance with a snippet. You don't have to pay to run it at all as of right now. So there are super cool things in our membership. If you would like to join, you can go to nocodeprocode.com and uh, you know just uh, submit an application video and you'll be in there in a few hours. But yeah, if you want to learn more, let me know. If you don't want to learn more and you like the videos, uh, you know, just stay on the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your wonderful comments, all your feedback, um, all your support. Stay safe and uh, avoid endless loops and ex unexpected invoices on Make and Zapier. And <laughs> see you tomorrow. And thank you so much. Bye-bye.